right? Here we go. And the second thing I wanted to let you know that this, this session is aimed directly at schools and teachers that are using our Pearson product, uh, um, Active Learn Primary, and in particular, the math product, Abacus. So if you're not using uh, ALP, Active Learn Primary, and the math product, um, I don't want to say that this session will not benefit you, no, on the opposite, you will benefit from uh, all the, uh, the interactive activities that uh, we will ap apply throughout the session. So um, it's up to you, you can stay on for the whole session, or uh, if you decide to uh, watch the recording later, it, it's up to you guys. Um, but let's start at the beginning. I want to share with you a poll and I, I will give you about a minute to answer. It's one simple question and I need to understand how many of you will be using um, Active Learn and Abacus in their schools. So let me just start the poll and uh, please uh, answer it now. Thank you. It's great, we have a big number of people that are using it now. I'll give you another few minutes, a few seconds, apologies. Okay, so last 10 seconds, and I'm going to close this poll. Perfect. So, um, what you're seeing in front of you now is that about 37% of you are using Abacus and Active Learn Primary. So, this session is basically aimed at those people that either have Abacus and Active Learn Primary previously in their schools or they currently registered for the free access that uh, uh, we made available a few weeks back. Um, for the rest of you, the 63% of people, um, please stay tuned with us and interact with us as much as possible because I will try to demonstrate as many interactive activities as possible that you can do with your students online whenever you're teaching math in particular. Um, I have a question here from Nuzhat. We are using Active Teach. Will it help us? Uh, I'm sure you will be able uh, to, to use some of the strategies that I will be using with you guys. So any question that is around any other product that you're using, will I be able to, to will, will this session benefit you or not? I'm sure you will benefit from several of, of the strategies. So stay tuned. If you don't want to have the focus on math abacus in particular, it's up to you. But again, the strategies will, will be beneficial for you guys. Um, let's start this one now. Now, what are we going to cover today? As you can see in front of you, um, we have four main parts of the session and we finish with a Q&A. So you see that we will have a quick introduction to um, Active Learn Primary and then Abacus in particular. In this introduction, we will see five uh, main sections. I will show you in a minute and then we focus on the next part of the session on allocating online work and monitoring how to monitor results. Then we have a very practical session where in the third one, the third session, you'll have to um, work together to plan part of a lesson. And 
then give us uh, or share your planning with us online and then we'll show you how Abacus fits in with um, uh, teaching online. And then you'll have a student view of Abacus. How, what would the students see at home? Just in case you haven't seen a student view before and we'll end up with uh, um, a quick activity to finish the day and a survey. And uh, if you have any questions, then we'll answer it at the end. So just to start with um, some ground rules, please, uh, to help us work together in a better way online. Uh, please keep your mic on mute all the time, unless it is an activity where you're required to talk, then you unmute yourself and uh, share with us. The second thing I would ask you to do, if you have any question that is uh, not urgent, just write it in the chat and I'll try my best to come back to all your questions. I have 140 people on the session again. Hopefully I won't get more than 100 questions. <laughs> um, the other thing, we will be using breakout rooms. Now again, the breakout rooms, I might put uh, four or five people in the breakout room, uh, maybe a bit more depending on the total number that will attend now the session. Um, but we'll see when it comes to the activities, how many people will be in the, in the room. Uh, please put yourself on mute because uh, there is background noise, if you don't mind. Um, okay. The fourth thing I would say to you, uh, the chat box, I've attended so many trainings and delivered so many trainings. I would ask you, uh, kindly please to keep the chat box uh, for work purposes, for uh, uh, writing, uh, writing comments, writing feedback, writing answers uh, to questions and activities that we're doing. Um, and the last thing, I received a few questions, a few uh, inquiries earlier about a certificate will this session will you receive a certificate at the end of the session uh, yes you will I spoke with the marketing team and we're gathering your information and they're preparing uh, certificates for you guys but bear, bear with us for a day or two until those certificates are prepared and it will be emailed to you any questions here this is time to ask before we start the first activity Okay, um, I would like to start, are we going to get the recording on the session? I will make sure to ask um, the marketing team to include a link to the recording with the certificate. All right, so I'm going to start with an icebreaker. Every lesson, every teacher um, usually like to start with something fun with students in the classroom in any normal situation. So I'd like to do this with you guys. I would like you in the chat box to write one word, only one word that describe how you're feeling today. Thanks, Christina. I see lots of positivity here. Good, great. Tired, yes, no problem. Excited, wow. I can't keep up with everybody now. <laughs> All the answers are popping out. There's loads of positivity here. Very excited. Sleepy. I am so sleepy too, but I'm going to stay awake for you guys. <laughs> good, good. Worked out. Who's doing workout? I'm doing loads of workout in the morning. That is fantastic. Some excellent positivity here. Aisha, I like your positivity. Blessed. Oh, no, that. It's fantastic. Sonia, tell me, why is it mysterious? Is the session mysterious or what? <laughs> Thirsty, grab some water, Sarah, please, please. The session, yes, it is mysterious. Okay, Sonia, hopefully you'll get some, some tips and ideas that you can apply with your students later. And this is the first one. Always start any online session with your student with something fun, a quick question that does not require a lot of time from you and from your students to answer. 
uh, whatever the question is, start with it. Um, I started with a simple one, share how you're feeling. And I'm really enjoying what I'm reading here because there is loads of positivity. So despite the whole situation, I can see loads of positivity. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, now, there was a question in between all this. How long is the session? The session will finish at 4.30, guys. It's two hours. We already spent 11 minutes together. So let's kick in with the first thing for today. Uh, our intro to Active Learn Primary and Abacus. Now, the way I'm going to do it is you see in front of you now the five sections of the first part. So we're going to look at the admin section in Active Learn Primary. So basically, you're looking at a quick overview of the platform, ALP. Uh, and from that section in, in the admin, you will be able to understand how you can, we will work on one particular thing, which is how to create groups for your students so you can assign work uh, later for them. And it reduces the amount of uh, allocation that you, can, that you have to do if you have to do it uh, student by student. Then we are going to look at uh, the planning. And in the planning, uh, you will see um, what plans are included with Abacus in particular and uh, how the planning is divided uh, uh, along the year, what resources are available, this is the third section, uh, how to allocate those resources, we'll come back to it in a minute, what assessment resources in particular you will find and there's a section for support that uh, is available for you as teachers to be able to use uh, Abacus properly. So let's start with the first thing, admin. Now, what I'm going to do now, you see the screen here. This is a screenshot of the admin section. I'm going to log in to uh, Active Learn Primary and go into the admin and in particular to groups and give you a quick demo on how it works. When the admin is finished, I'm going to ask you a question. So every section we finish, there will be a short activity after it. And this is a tip for you to do with your students. You ready for it? Let me just do a quick new share. And here we go. Now, for, for the schools and uh, anyone that is not using Active Learn Primary, and Abacus in particular, we still have a free access. Uh, if you'd like uh, to receive this free access to Active Learn Primary, let me know at the end of the session and I'll take your uh, email address and send you, uh, or actually I'll share with you an email address where you can uh, send them a request to have the free access. Now, as you can see here, if you're using ALP, if you're familiar with it, that's fantastic. If you're not familiar with it, then when you log in, you will have the admin section on the top right. When you click on it, you would need to go to groups. And in groups, this is where the system will allow you to create groups for your students. And, uh, and, and after that, you will be able to allocate tasks for this group of students. And, Usually, when we create groups of students, we create them based on their uh, ability, ability level. So you could have a group of students that uh, is low ability, uh, high achievers, uh, the core students, you call them, you name them, uh, whatever your school and your department uh, call them. Uh, so how do we do that? We are in groups. The first thing to do, click on new group, and give your group a name. So what are we going to call our group? We're going to call I Achievers. Create a group and from that you have to, if you notice here, the High Achievers, we have to link 
pupils, students, and we have to link teachers. And this is important because I created the group. If I want to change the name, I can click on it and change the name. Now, if you notice something, we have here, click here to add pupils and here to link teachers. Before I do that, notice that here also in the main screen, you have two live links also to do the same thing. Um, add pupils and add teachers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it from the actual name. I achievers, click here. And I have the list of the students in my class. If I want to add two students out of 40, uh, then I choose the students. And the step is very important here. I click on bulk edit options. And I'm creating groups, set groups. And then I choose the high achievers and set groups for two users. Now, if I go back to groups again, notice now what happens in the high achievers. I have the two students that I just added, student 110 and student 111. That's the name of my students. Now what's missing here? The missing thing is adding a teacher. Are you able to see my screen, guys? I have a question about guys that didn't. Sorry, one second. Yes, OK, great. And now, if I click on 0 here to add the teacher, to link the teacher, click here to add teacher to the group. And again, I'm back to the teacher uh, section. I want to add my name, bulk edit option, set groups we're using the same uh, process high achievers set groups for one user now i have a question for you guys thank you for confirming your uh, that you can see the screen notice here now i'm going back to groups and notice in the groups and the high achievers we have two students in this group and one teacher now, I want you to think about the following questions. What if, um, what happens if I decide to add one student to more than one group? So that is one question. And another question, actually answer this question. Come on, let's do it in the chat. What happened if I decide to add one student to more than one group? Let me hear your answers, or let me read your answers. That's a good one, Nida. Yes, they will receive tasks and resources from both groups, absolutely. They will get access to all tasks that will be allocated to this group, yeah. It will be duplicate accounts. No, there won't be any duplicate accounts because you can add more than one student, more than, uh, you can add one student to more than one group. This will not affect anything in the system, any information any in the system because it's, it's only creating a group for the students to be able, uh, for the teacher to be able to send tasks to a particular student. For example, if you have a student that uh, is a high achiever, but when you push them more, you see that they're not getting the challenge that you are uh, giving them. So you create a second high achiever group that has the same uh, one or two of the students from the first group. And then um, you can send them um, tasks from this group or from this group, it's fine. They will have two windows of this group and participate in each and all. Okay. That's fantastic. I want you to know one thing, guys. The groups are for the teachers. The students will not know that they are in a group. Okay? The students will not know that they are in a particular group. They will only receive tasks. This grouping is for the teacher to support uh, themselves in assigning, in assigning, uh, allocating tasks to be done at home or in the classroom. Okay. 
sorry about the noise. Now, let me go back to my screen. Um, here we go. Now, what I would like you to do, I mentioned to you a few steps on how to create uh, a group of students. In the chat box, I'd like you to write three of these steps. What should I do? You go to admin, create a group, make group, add teachers, add pupils. Yes, thank you. Login groups, new groups. So that's the first thing. Absolutely. Uh, select a group, create a new group, click on students list and choose a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you'd need to remember all the time, I'm seeing fantastic answers there. Um, a tip for you guys. If you're asking a student, if you're asking your students a question online and you ask the students to write in the chat box or whatever platform you're using, you need to be careful students copying from each other. So one thing I didn't do now is asking you to send me the message privately. You notice when you're typing, you can send to everyone or you can send privately. So the small tip for you, for the future, make sure you ask students to send it privately. And that way you can monitor the students' answers without them copying each other's answers. All right? I see someone that added uh, the bulk, definitely. So when you, add, uh, when you try to add a student or a group of students to a group, make sure when you choose the student, you go to bulk edit options to be able to create, uh, select the group and set it and set it for those students. Fantastic guys, thank you for your participation. I'm loving this. Uh, my idea before was to um, get participants to speak and type at the same time, but now uh, we have 161 people joined. <laughs> so I'm not sure how we can get everyone to talk. Now, this is the admin part. Let's go to the next part, planning. Again, what do we see in planning? Um, let me demo the planning. There is a private message here from Asma. Uh, new group as students, bulk or individual? Yes, Asma, sorry, you're, uh, you're correct about that. Let me just do a new share and go show you the plan. So when you are in Abacus, we're done the grouping. We finished with it. You click on home and you click on Abacus. And in Abacus, you will have the planning here. Now, I want you to take notes, especially those that are using Abacus now. And if it's new to you, because I'm going to share a few important things and then I will ask you three questions later uh, to check your understanding of the planning uh, tab in, in Abacus. What you're seeing now in front of you, the minute I clicked on planning, you have an overview of what teaching for mastery is in uh, teaching math using Abacus. There's loads of videos, there's loads of links, that a teacher can use. So that's the first thing. It explains to you uh, how Abacus was developed and how it is built on the mastery approach for any school that is using a UK product. Now, the next thing I want to share with you, when, notice here we have key stage one, key stage two, and so on. And we have the reception, so we have three key stages. If you click on the name of the stage, which what I'm doing now, you're also going to get a quick overview of the key stage. And if you notice here, uh, Dr. Roos, who developed Abacus, is sharing lots of videos for you 
to learn partic about particular skills and how to teach them. So remember, the first thing to do when you access the planning is to click on the name, excuse me, on the name of the key stage so you get an overview. The other thing I want to show you also, notice here, after year two, we have a mixed age year one support, year, sorry, year one, two support, same thing for year three, four, and same thing for year five, six. And this is an additional support for teachers uh, in order to bridge the gap of knowledge between the two years and between one key stage and another. Now, I'm going to uh, expand this arrow and notice here. And I want you to notice a small difference. Um, when I click on, um, sorry, notice here we have three terms, autumn, spring, and summer. And in the Gulf here, we don't use autumn, we use term one, term two, term three. So what we're showing you is that every term is divided into two mini terms. And every mini term consists of five weeks. Okay, so far, it's still the same for reception, for key stage one, sorry, for year one, and so on. If we go to year two, you notice we still have the same design, the same amount of weeks. Now, let me just close the reception, and I'll come back to it in a minute. Look, for example, we're taking year, year one now. We have the overview. When I clicked on autumn term one, which is the first mini term, I have an overview here of the term, which is the long-term planning. And this overview focuses on the progression of the curriculum. What is the summary for this week to be taught? Summary of the lessons. Here are the strands we're focusing on. And here are the objectives that we want to cover. This is a high level overview. And notice here, every week has a number and this number has a hyperlink. And if I click on it, it's going to take me to week one. But instead of clicking on it, I'll open it from here in a second. One other thing, this planning, the long-term planning, you can export it and Notice here you can decide what to include in your download. And then when you click download, I'm not going to download it at this second, but when you click download, it downloads in Word document so you can edit it anytime you want. The other thing we have uh, the resources and the prerequisites that are needed in order to, to teach this trend. Notice one thing about planning. When I click on week, now we have the weekly planning, lesson one, lesson two, and so on. And then you can export the weekly planning. And you'll get more live links. Now, if I expand it one more time, this week's planning becomes daily planning. And you can export your daily planning one by one. These are options for you, depending how you like to plan, you can download. Personally, I prefer to download the weekly planning and work from that on. Now notice another thing. Um, in the daily planning, what you're seeing in front of you, it downloads exactly as is in the Word document. So you can see what strand you're focusing on during this day. You can see your main focus, your objectives, and so on. The nice thing is that it suggests what starters you have, your main teaching, the key questions that you want to focus on, and then you have differentiated activities here. Activities for the core group, activities for the support group, and activities for the extent group. And all these live links, you have the plenary, I'll talk about the live links, one second. You have the photocopiables, which are the resources that you can download and print, hopefully when we go back to schools. Uh, you have your digital resources here. You have some physical resources that you need 
in order to teach this lesson. These are all suggested in the daily planning. All these live links, when you download the document, they will stay and you can access them from the Word document. All you have to do is click on the, on the link and it takes you back to the Active Learn primary. If you already uh, logged out, all you have to do is uh, add your username and password and log in again, and it takes you straight to the resource instead of searching for it. Now, the last thing I want to mention about planning, notice that from year one to year six, we have weekly and daily planning. Notice now, in the reception, we have the mini terms, we have the weekly planning, but we don't have daily planning. That is the main difference between reception and key stage one and two, where there is a leeway for reception teachers uh, to be able to teach particular strands um, at, uh, according to their time allocated for math and the level of students that they have. We have a question, how is the website is linked how is this website is linked to Pearson? This is a Pearson thing. Abacus, Active Learn Primary, is a Pearson um, platform. Karima, just to answer your question, okay? Now, let's go back to my slides. And notice one thing, I'm jumping from uh, the slide to the platform. This is another strategy that you have to use with your, with your students. Use as many resources as possible and have them ready in advance. So let's do an activity now. If someone would like to shout out the answer, because I'm going to show you three questions, one at a time. If you'd like to shout out the answer, do. If you'd like to uh, type it in in the chat box, also do that. First question is, I see yes and no. <laughs> I need you to explain yourselves if you're saying yes or saying no, if you're saying no. Reception is only weekly. Yes, absolutely. Let's try when you're answering those questions now, let's try to send it privately. I see a few of you doing it privately. Uh, let's practice it. Reception is only weekly. Absolutely, that's the correct answer. So. In Abacus, we have daily planning from year one to year six, and at the reception, we have weekly planning. Of course, you have the long-term planning and so on, but I'm talking about the details of the planning. Perfect, guys. Question number two, and remember now to send your uh, answers privately. Does Abacus planning has the same objectives const content with I primary? Uh, right, this is a good question. I'm going to pause here for a second and, and answer this question because it's important. Um, if a school is using iPrimary, which is another product that we have, iPrimary is linked to Abacus. So it is not the same planning, but it's the same resources. So the planning in iPrimary for math in particular uh, when we suggest resources in the planning, they are all Abacus resources. Whoever asked the question, because the question jumped up so high now. <laughs> um, that's Clary. I like your name. I like your name, Clary. <laughs> that's a lovely name. So you won't have the same planning, but you will have um, the Abacus resources that are suggested in the planning. Right. Next question. You can read it yourself. Now I need you to send me the answer privately. I'm seeing loads of answers now. You don't know each other's answers, which is great. So far, everyone is wrong. <laughs> uh, 
I got a one correct answer. Yay! Another one. Fantastic. So if you answered yes, the question, uh, sorry, the answer is wrong. It is no. It is mixed age planning for year one, two, year three, four, but it's not year four, five. It's for years five and six. Five and six. <laughs> Thank you for that. So it was a bit of a tricky question uh, and I didn't read it on purpose. And this is another strategy that you get your students to do if you're teaching online. So let's go to question number three and the last one. It's confusing now, this name. <laughs> this name, it's as simple as um, you have key stage one, year one and two, and then you have um, a mixed age planning. Then you have uh, key stage two, year three, four, then you have mixed age planning. Then you have year five and six, then you have mixed age plan. Uh, Alia, the, your question, I can read Arabic, so I'm going to answer it to everyone. The, the time of this uh, session has always been 2.30. <laughs> right, last question, guys. Here you go. Again, send me the yes or no privately. And if no, try to give me an explanation. I'm getting loads. Every single answer is correct. This is an easy one. It's weekly and then daily. Okay, that's the answer to the previous question. Um, Chindu, you said no. I know I'm naming you this time. I'm sorry about that. Um, the correct answer is yes to this question because we have three terms, autumn, spring, and summer. And then each one is divided into two mini terms, two half terms. So autumn one, term autumn two, then spring one, two, and summer one, two. And that equals to term one, two, three that we have here. Okay, guys? Any questions? But summer is too short to be divided. <laughs> uh, um, well, depending in which country you are. <laughs> in UAE, we finish in July, so it's not short at all. It's still 12 weeks. <laughs> right, let's go to the third section. The third section is the resources. Again, I have an activity in the resources, but I'll leave it until the end. Um, let's do a new share and jump in straight into the platform again. And now I'm going to resources. To access resources, you have two different ways. Either you click home, abacus, and you click resources, or from resources, you click abacus. That depends on how the teachers would like to navigate the platform. Um, so again, take notes. Remember, because the next activity is different to what you did now. Um, what you're seeing in front of you is a filter to the left-hand side here. And this filter will make your life easy when you're searching for a particular resource. Now, notice something here. We have over 12,000 resources in Abacus alone. So imagine you want to search for one particular resource. You, if you don't use your filter, you won't be able to get to the correct resource so easily. So by using the filter, you can uh, filter by year. So if you're in year one, year two, and so on, if you're in reception, notice some now that from 12,000 here into if I choose year four, the resources went down to 2,276. Um, is the time course different in Ramadan from Pearson's schedule? Alia, uh, no, I just answered the question. No, that the time of this training is still the same, 2.30 today. No. Um, I'm in year four. This is the number of resources that I have. And notice that you can use your filter 
by searching according to your strand that you're teaching. And notice there is a number next to each strand. There is, for the number and place value strand, we have 458 resources for year four. Let me just remove it here. Notice number and place value, there's 2,776. So the more, uh, the more you use your filter, the easier you can get to the actual resource. You can search also by category. So you can find the assessment, you can find the homework, you can find interactive activities, which I'm going to show you now. You can search by a particular resource where you have lesson plans, uh, you have resources that are linked to problem solving, you have uh, progression maps, which is very important, I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. Um, and also you can search by classroom management category, which is, um, notice here we have differentiated activities. So depending on what you want, you can learn how to use the filter and it makes your life easier. The next, there are a few questions that I will answer at the end, guys, uh, because they're not relevant now to the topic. Um, notice here that we have Dr. Ruth again. This video, uh, sorry, this resource in particular, you know that it's a video from its icon. So for example, if I go search for an interactive activity, notice that the icon changes. And this icon means that this particular activity is compatible with a tablet. If I remove the interactive activity from here and I go to assessment guide, notice that this is a PDF. So you get, you get an Excel sheet and so on. There's loads of, of uh, different types of resources. Now let's do a quick demo on what to expect here from these resources. Uh, let me focus on the interactive game and activity. So these are activities that you can allocate to students. And again, I am not going to show you how to uh, allocate in details now because there is another section for it, but I'll show you the important information about the resources. Anytime you find a resource, the first thing that you have to do is click on more info. And this more info will give you all the details that you need to understand about this resource. Um, Reem, your question is important. You want to use Envision Math. And this is, uh, this is not a UK product. This is an American product. So it, the platform is a little bit different. And you, this will not help you basically if you're using Envision. What, what, you, what you will benefit from is this, the small tips and the small activities that I'm sharing with you guys. But in terms of content of this platform, it's different to the Envision map. Now, back to the info, you will notice that this activity is for students that are uh, the core students, they're not the support or they're not the uh, extend uh, students. I mean, high achievers, low achievers, whatever you want to call them. But this is for the core students. It is for year one. And notice, this activity can be, can be used as a practice activity, as an assessment, as an interactive game, and so on. And it's, uh, in the classroom management, it's independent. And notice there is a link. What does this link do? This link helps you as a teacher to send this resource to another teacher. So all they have to do is click on the link and log in to Active Learn Primary and they'll go straight to this resource. And it saves a group of teachers. Uh, it saves them on searching, uh, searching for a particular resource. <laughs> There's another question about uh, Power Math. Power Math is another product for us. Um, there is a plan to do, next week we're doing Book Club, which is another active learn 
and power mass could be also coming in every week we're preparing something it will be advertised but i'm sure there will be loads of uh, cpds that uh, you'll benefit from uh, power mass is on the pipeline i cannot tell you when the training will happen but it should happen so so again um this is um, every resource and it is important to look at the info. Now let me choose um, this resource. Notice that we have the allocate button and this will help us send this to a student. But I'll show you how to do this after. If I click on assessment, notice here we have the assessment guide which I will talk about in a minute. But again, there is no allocate. Can someone type in the answer why there is no allocate button in the assessment guide here? I'm waiting for someone's answer. You can put it out to public. <laughs> because it's a teacher resource, absolutely. There's several answers. It is not a student resource, absolutely, guys. Thank you for that. Um, so here is in terms of the resources that are available. Um, I will stop here. I'll go back to the activities. And what I want you to do there is an activity where you have to fill in the gap. You'll have to read it. And when you answer privately, I'd like you to write number one and then the gap, only the word that is missing. So I'll give you two minutes to do that. Perfect, the first one is correct so far. We have a few mistakes. <laughs> yeah, keep it going guys, answer all the questions. Don't, don't stop at question one. Yeah, we're getting Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Someone is trying to give me the exact number. Manar, thank you for that. <laughs> You're nearly there. You're close to the number. You could have been a winner in, in, in a show or something. <laughs> Perfect, guys. Perfect. Let me give you the answers now. Sorry? Yes? There are over 10,000 resources in Navrakis. Yes, there is, there is more than 12,000. Um, so, again, the first answer is filter. Using the filter will help you find the resource. The second answer is a hyperlink. I think I added the word link. I shouldn't have added the word link. It's, it's, it made it very easy. But yes, there is a hyperlink that can be shared uh, with another teacher and there's over 12,000 resources. Thank you guys for your participation. Okay, the last two things. What I want to show you here, and I'll go straight to the platform and show it to you, but to give you a quick explanation of what the assessment resources are and what sort of support you can find. So Abacus, in the assessment resources, we, we will look at the assessment guide now. And this is so important for you. You do not start teaching without looking at the assessment guide. You do not start teaching without looking at the progression maps. And then if you want to do, if, if you're familiar with the assessment guide and the progression maps, then it's easy to find then the correct test and the marking scheme and then apply it. So that's in terms of assessment resources. I'll show you where to find them. Uh, in the support section, I will show you what my files is. 
which is your online storage, online library. And in the classroom support section, what sort of support the, the, uh, the program or the platform provide for you, for Abacus in particular? So let's go back to the platform. Now remember, I'm still in resources. I didn't move from resources. What I'm going to show you now is the assessment resources. You can find them here in the resources. So I just want to show you something. Here's the assessment guide. Here are the, the assessments and the progression maps. You will find them all in the resource section. However, there is an easier way to find them. That's why I'm not opening any of them. In fact, if you go back to Abacus, you will see there is a tab here called assessment resources. This one is extremely important. So I'm gonna click on it and all you will find here is what we talked about now, the assessment guide, the progression maps and the tests. And it makes it easier. Look, there's only 78 resources. They're divided between the years here. And the first thing I recommend everyone to do when you start teaching math, UK, of course, we're talking about Abacus Active Learn Primary it's a UK product. Um, <laughs> the first thing to do is to download the progression maps. Let me just open this document and do a new share so you can see it. Apologies. I'll share it again, one second. Here you go. Now, what you're seeing in front of you, we have a document that talks about the progression in math from reception up to year six. You can see the tabs at the bottom. And in every one, you have the term, the mini term, and on top here, you have the skills that the student has to cover. Let me go to year two, for example. Number and place value. Notice here that this is term, the first term, the first mini term. The num and the number and place value, you have an explanation of what needs to be covered. And then under the explanation, sorry again, I don't know why this disappeared. Under the explanation, you will have the example of what the student will be doing, will be doing in order to achieve this uh, skill. This is so important for you as a teacher to understand before you start teaching. This progression, let me do a new share again. The document that you saw is for the whole year, for all the years from reception to year six. The most important part is when you get to uh, your particular year, let me just go to progression maps alone without the rest, because I'm using my filter again. If I go to year two progression map, notice that the first document downloaded as Excel. Now this document is PDF. I'm going to click on it and I want to show you how it looks like. Now, notice one thing, that this document is PDF. It has the same information as in the first Excel document, but it's not a big document. It, the aim of this document is to have in each mini term, the specific page printed and added to the student file. And every time the student achieves one of those numbers, you put a tick in the box here. Let me use my annotate here. Where you tick it here and you write the date. Now, I'm writing the date here, but I'm not supposed to do it here. Uh, you write it at the top of the page or in the box here and so on. So what does that mean? It means that using this sheet to check the progress of the student on a weekly basis, which will help you in the future in, the, in your conversation with the parent, with the student, with the 
head of the department about the progress of the student. It keeps a hard evidence of when the student has achieved this particular skill. Any questions here? Okay. So, first thing, as I said, it's important to download the progression maps. The second thing, it's the assessment guides. Again, you cannot check student progress without looking at the assessment guides. Notice here, this is year two math assessment guide. When you open it, it has every single information that you need in order to assess students in math. And in, in this case, we're talking about year two. So it tells you what the progression map is, the key features of this progression maps, and then how to use it, then about the tests, how they are prepared, what supporting documents you can find in the system, how to use the test, how to mark the test, how to interpret the results. It's so important. It makes your life so much easier how to moderate at the end uh, when it comes to assessment in math. This is in terms of assessment. Of course, at the end, you have examples of tests. The tests download as PDF. So you cannot basically change them, but they are available for you. And then one thing you need to know about is the resources here and the marking guidance. So you have the additional resources that are linked to the test and you have the marking guidance that will help you mark this particular test. That's in terms of assessment resources. And the last thing, the classroom support we talked about. Notice here, we have several types of support. Each one you can expand it and there is links and there's documents, there's videos, depending on the type of, of support that is required. So from how to start using ALP and Abacus into the professional development that is provided for that. Pedagogy is important. You have Dr. Ruth Mertens talking about the, pedag the Abacus pedagogy and how to teach math. Uh, the calculation policy that is very important, how to teach calculation, and then planning uh, documents and support that are available here. Uh, you have assessment support, which you already saw the assessment guide. Um, you have matching charts with the different uh, UK countries, and then you have some classroom goodies where you can download and put in your classroom and so on. So this is important for you to find support when you have any question before you reach out to Pearson or help me find this. It's all there in the support. The last thing I mentioned to you is about my files. So when you click on home, this is my files. This is your online library. What does it mean? So you see, I have created so many files here. I can create a file, new folder, and this folder will, uh, I can save my planning, I can save my resources in it, so I don't need to go and search for it again. So let's call it uh, training, since we are in training today at folders. Now, the training folder is somewhere here between, there you go. It has zero documents. So what happens? How do I use it? If I'm in resources, for example, and I found that, let's look at the photocopyable. I found that this sheet, this particular sheet, let's, let's go to info, this particular sheet is for year one, two, three, four. Uh, it's a resource sheet, it's a teaching resource. I want to use it after two weeks, but I don't want to search for it again. I click on it and I add to my files. Now notice here the course has been added to my files, but it's not in the folder that I created. If I go back to home and I go to my files, notice here, this is the resource. I click on it 
I click move to and the folder that I created is training. And now it's moved, you'll see now on the left hand side that the training has one document. This is how I save my resources. So anytime I go into a classroom, if I have a file named based on my class that I teach, I log into my file and I find all the resources, all the planning, all the documents I need, and I do not need to search anywhere for them. Right. All of this for free. <laughs> for the time being, you will have access for two months for it. Yes, if you'd like uh, FIDA, to have access to uh, Active Learn Primary, um, you'll have to request it. Okay, I'll send you the link at the end of the session so you can request it from there. Yes, it's all free for now. If you want Abacus, you'll have access to Abacus and everything I mentioned you will have. Right, let's go back to There we go. Any questions, guys? Okay. Thanks, Christina. Okay, guys. Um, the next section, uh, we're going to look at allocating online work and monitoring resource. Now, I will do my homework, then I'll sleep for a while. Sumaya, so I would like to answer your question, but at the end of the session, please remind me. Uh, if you don't mind, guys, if you're not talking about, I'm going to mute you now. Thank you. Now, how do I allocate resources? I said uh, earlier that I'll, I'll show you exactly how to allocate the resource and how to monitor results. Let's do some... Now, notice something. We have resources to be allocated and we have the current allocations. How do I check that? Let me, because there is an activity after I demonstrate this. Now, if I'm in Abacus, I'm in resources. Whatever resource I find, let me go to my favorite one, the interactive game and activities, and let me choose year five. So I want to assign, I want to assign this activity to the students. Remember which we created a group, a group earlier. All I have to do is click on it, on the name, and click allocate. And from that, Dima, I will send the link to, the, uh, to everyone at the end. Um, remember, uh, notice here that I can allocate by class, I can allocate by group, and I can allocate by cohort. We created a group earlier, if you remember. We called it high achievers. Here are the two students in high achievers. And all I, all I did is I clicked on group, clicked on the group that I want to send to, I chose the students and I will click allocate. Notice here, if I prevent reallocations of previously set work, I can set this option and I click allocate and now it's gone to the student. That's all I have to do to allocate resources. Now, I can allocate more than one resource at the same time and I follow the same procedure. Okay. This is in terms of allocation. Now, the student did the work at home. How do I monitor? Now, before that, I forgot something, I'll show you. We allocated the work for students. Um, from current allocations, if I click on it, I can have a quick overview of all the resources that I allocated to all my students. Notice here, you'll find the name of my students. If I click on Abacus in particular, student 110 has 13 resources and so on. I can 
click on the, I can choose the student. And now I only see the resources that are allocated to one student, which is student 110. I can click on uh, the resource link and I click deallocate. Now the system will ask me, here we go, I want to remove it from student 110. I need to enter my password to confirm that it's me. Because remember, I can add more than one student and more than one teacher. Uh, so we don't want teachers to start uh, deallocating each other's work. Or I can, sorry, let me clear this. I want to show you one last thing about uh, deallocate. No, I didn't choose any student and I want to deallocate. Here, it is deallocate. So I can deallocate one or more than a resource at the same time. Now, let's do a quick activity. I'm gonna launch a poll and it has questions and you need to answer them. You have one minute for all of you. The first question is the following. Choose as many answers as possible. I have 32 people that answered so far. Perfect, keep it going guys. I have a few wrong answers there. Yeah, I'm gonna give you another 20 seconds and I'm gonna close the poll. So I have 72 people that answered so far. One last try. Michelle, I'm surprised you can't see the questions. It should pop up in front of your screen because I have 80 people that answered so far. Maybe you minimized it by mistake, Michelle. Can you check? All right, guys, I'm ending this poll now. And I'm going to share the results. So notice that the first question uh, there is only one wrong answer. So the types of resources I can allocate to a pupil, the right answers are homework sheets, interactive game activities, videos, and photocopiables, but I cannot allocate a lesson plan to a student because it's a teacher resource. And in the second question, uh, in the current allocations, I am able to allocate resources to each student separately and also to allocate to, to the allocate resources for all students at the same time. Uh, so the answer is yes, I can do it. So remember guys, resources, any resource can be allocated to a student apart from a teacher resource. Okay. Um, now, I want you to answer in the chat box. What is the difference in your opinion, what is the difference between an activity reporting and a mark book?
I know I didn't demonstrate it, but I want you to think about it. The question is on the screen, Manar. What do you think the difference is between activity reporting and a mark book? I'm getting some really nice answers there. Activity reporting is formative assessment and a mark book is a summative assessment. That's a fantastic answer, Asma, thank you. Yeah, Andrea too, mark book is the teacher personal collection of the learner's marks, absolutely. Guys, I'm hearing noise in the background. Yeah, so activity reporting is formative, mark book is personal, mark. perfect, perfect. You got it there, guys, you got it. So um, basically, remember when we assigned an activity to the student? Uh, yes, thank you, guys, thank you. The activity reporting assess only that activity. Let me ask you a question, not in relation to what I'm, what I'm showing you here. Um, but about the strategies that I'm using, what do you think? Uh, am I keeping you engaged enough? Imagine having a, a, a class of 140 people. <laughs> I'm trying to get you engaged as much as possible. Uh, so hopefully you are, you are engaged with me and with some of those questions. I know there is a lot of demonstration that I'm doing, but it's part of... Uh, um, of the delivery now and, and, and the nature of the content that I'm delivering. Okay, let's, um, let's go back to, thank you guys. Thank you for the positive vibe. <laughs> Let me show you here what happens. I'm just trying to connect this platform to Envision Pearson. <laughs> Karima, it's a different, it's the same concept, but a different platform. Okay, so you need to have training on Envision in order to use it. But it's the same concept at the end of the day. Now, um, let me go to Abacus and I want to show you the two different things, the activity reporting here and the mark books. In the activity reporting, remember I assigned earlier an activity to a student, student 110, okay? And notice uh, the difference is and several of you mentioned it, is that uh, the, the activity reporting is, is the formative assessment and the tests are, the results of the tests are entered in the mark book, which is the summative assessment. So in the formative assessment, notice that each activity that you assign to a student, especially those interactive activities, they are formed out of three levels, so bronze, silver, and gold. And I'll show it to you when I open the student view. Um, notice here, if I click on the student name, it will give me all the activities that the student did, or the, the, all the allocated activities to the student, and then it gives me an overview of those activities and how well the student did. So notice here, Hedgehog Hurry, the student did it, opened it in February 2020 and did the three levels and got 100% in each level. And if I click the number, the percentage, apologies, it gives me the details of how many questions in the level and the result of it. What you're seeing here, the student didn't open any of these resources and there is no um, application at all. Now, do we have any questions here? Can we use this program separately? I mean, for planning, looking for resources and evaluating students. I'm, I'm just, Patul, I'm just showing you how to evaluate students. So this is the first section of evaluating students. The planning, we already discussed it, what plans you can uh, find and download, and the resources, we already showed you how to find the resources and how to allocate them to students. 
Now, this is an overview of the formative assessment of all the tasks that have been sent to students. This is the activity reporting. If I click on mark books, remember we did the test, and now I want to enter the marks. Now, a lot of teachers, a lot of schools, uh, don't use this feature because, because you have your own learning management system. However, I am going to uh, show you what to do here. If you decide to use uh, the Markbook in, in Abacus and ALP, you have the Autumn Term 1 and Autumn Term 2. Remember the, the mini terms that we talked about? So in whatever term you are, you click on it and then you enter your mark and then you can add any comments here. Those comments will stay there and you can import them, uh, sorry, export them in order to use them in, in future um, discussions with the students, head of department, parents, so, and so on. This is each term separately. I'm not gonna save it at the moment. And then you have the math overview of the whole year. In this math overview, it gives you a breakdown of the attainment, and then when you enter the marks, it gives you the attainment for each student. And then here you have the useful resources that you can refer back to in terms of assessment and progression maps. I can go, I can uh, check the uh, graphs, I can download them, and if I want, I can go to each student separately and check their own uh, results. So this is in general, uh, let me go back. This is the difference between the activity reporting and the mark book. Now, how do we use Abacus when teaching online? What's, what's gonna happen now? We're gonna try to work in groups, guys. I am going to, um, how are we gonna do it? We have 143 people so far that are still online. Uh, I was going to divide you into five groups, but if I do five groups, we're talking about um, 30 or a little bit less than 30 people in each group. So what I'm going to do is divide you into uh, groups of five people. And each group choose to do the following. So the group will choose to prepare a starter, just discuss it together, and I want you to share later what you prepare, what your activity is. So what are you going to do as a starter? What is the activity you're going to do as a main? What is the activity you're going to do as an extended activity or a support activity? And what is your plenary for the lesson that is mentioned here in front of you? So the lesson is, the strand is here, number and place value. You have your focus is for students to do this. The objective is to estimate a set of objects. Your prior learning should be this. These are the key vocabulary that you're using and the outcome at the end of the lesson of this. Now, this is all the information you need in order to plan for a lesson. What I want you to do, I'm going to send you into breakout rooms now and um, no problem, guys, if you have another webinar, uh, whoever cannot attend, you can watch the recording later. Um, I'll divide you into, into the session, into, sorry, the breakout rooms, and you decide, you have only 10 minutes together to discuss one of these activities. So which one you want to do? Starter, main, extended, support, plenary. Discuss it, and when we come back, I'm going to pick randomly one person from three or four groups to share with me what you planned. And after that, I will share with you how you can find things on Abacus that are related to this lesson and how you can teach the lesson online. Am I clear about that? I'm going to create now, if I do 10 rooms, no, I'm going to do 15 rooms. So you 16 rooms, more than that. I'm going to do 20 rooms. So in each room, we're gonna have about six participants and that's a good size for people to discuss.
So get ready, you'll have a message in front of you to join the room, please do so. Hi, Nadia. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. I, good afternoon. I see you're on your own here. They still didn't yeah. join you. <laughs> I'm waiting for others. I thought maybe I'm in the wrong room. No, you're something. not in the wrong room, but I assigned another six people to your room, but they still didn't join. So, uh, look, um, let me maybe move you to another room. Will that help? Yeah, that'll be good. I'll move you to room one, okay? Sure. All right. Oh, I, yeah, I will now. Guys, for those that are still didn't join a room, would you mind uh, joining? We have a few rooms that are um, empty.
jar of pencils or a, a tray of cubes could be provided to them. And then we will ask them to guess or estimate how many objects are there, okay, in the main activity. And then they can follow up uh, by counting in steps of, uh, in, I mean, making sets of five. That will be a quicker way. And uh, once we are done with this starter, like they have the understanding of skips of twos, then they can have um, the main activity as counting sets of objects. We can show a video to them that how we, they can, you know, do groupings of uh, twos, fives, and tens, and then provide them with a task. Sorry for the disturbance. So. So what would be our um, uh, main activity? We would ask them to estimate how many objects there are. Say yeah, we, we give can, them Yes, pencils. we can provide them with some real life objects as I was thinking that uh, maybe some, and, you know, a jar of pencils yeah, or a me. tray of cubes and yeah. uh, ask them to estimate how many they are actually. And then later they will be counting those. After that, they can group also, no? Yes. Later. They can group and, and uh, uh, they have to bundle, make it as bundle. If it is twos, if it is fives, and if yes, it is ten, sets of it sets as, of exactly. And they then can they provide can rubber bands. Yeah. Hello, guys. Alia, I think you asked for help. How can I help? I was in the room listening to the discussion. Uh, Muhammad, Afra, can you hear me? Okay, Alia, what you have to do, I shared with you earlier, um, the, 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 basically you have to plan for, let me share my screen with you. You can see my screen now, okay? So you have this lesson, right? I want you to choose with the group you're in, with Afra and with Muhammad, um, one idea, a starter, a main, or a plenary for this lesson that is in front of you, and discuss together how would you plan for it. What activity would you do online uh, with the students to teach this lesson? Would be good if I can hear your voices, guys. Okay, great. Alia, um, yeah, it would be good if you can talk to each other, please. Yeah. I'm going to join another group now just to see if they need any support. <laughs> Alia, you're not a math teacher. Okay, it's okay. Um, teachers can still have ideas on how to, you teach your kids. If you have kids, you teach neighbors, you teach relatives. So, how would you teach? It's, it's, it's a year two uh, um, lesson, so it's, it's not really complicated. I'm not a maths teacher either. Um, so think of an idea. How would, you, how would you teach students to count? All right. I'll be back. Or the pens or, you know, whatever. So we can mention that actually. Like you can pick a week students, for example, to do that activity with them and precisely because you, you won't have much time to do that with all students, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but the rest they would, it, yeah, like you, someone mentioned Kahoot. Yes, that would be good for like overall, all students in the class. Um, um, what else? Did we cover everything? Um, prior learning recite vocabulary so how will they get yeah. hi Paulina are you on your own in this session let me check um,
I just connected. Sorry guys, thanks for reminding me, Divya. I was on mute, apologies. So yes, yeah, I, I noticed that um, when I put people in breakout rooms that the number has dropped and uh, mainly because there is a lot of people there. But usually I do this kind of activity um, with 30, 40 people maximum where you can uh, work with uh, this, this okay number. Uh, the number here is very big, but I wanted you to experience another strategy that can be done with your students in your classroom. And the strategy is about assigning a part of an activity to this group, let them work together. And what I didn't do, because I couldn't go into every single room, 20 rooms in general, if I want to access each one and spend one minute, that's 20 minutes without doing anything. Uh, but what you can do with your students when you have five groups, prepare questions and go into the room and post these questions in the chat. Or you can even share with them a document. You can, share, you can talk to them uh, or re-explain what's going to happen or even share your screen so they remember what they are required to do. It is important that when you do something, uh, with this, when you ask them to do something, you go and do a follow-up in the break, uh, breakout room. I went to a few rooms. I listened to a few people. I didn't interfere because there isn't enough time to do that. So um, anybody would like to share an idea? We take one uh, comment from any person that talked. Because I heard a few of you, like Tasneem, Arifai, Nadia, uh, Shahad. I, I wrote a few names that people were talking. So if you'd like to step forward and, and give us an idea of what you discussed, that would be great. I'll give you 30 seconds. And if not, I'll continue. Answer, good yeah. afternoon. Hi, Christina. Yeah, uh, we're in a breakout room with uh, three other people, uh, but uh, none of them were able to open their microphone. Okay. So they were just chatting with me, and I was the one uh, uh, using the microphone and discuss, but no one showed the camera as well. So that's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, chosen starter. Mm -hmm. It is closet in a breakout room. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we have come up with an idea. Like, for example, we, we will show to our students a jar. Oh, you can't see the jar. A jar yeah. with candy yeah. inside. You and came ready. <laughs> yeah, I Unless have it next to me it. on my table. <laughs> yes. That's a tip for students, yeah. So we have this jar and then we have candies inside and we will ask them if they can guess the number of candies inside. Mm -hmm. And then later on after that, if everybody were able to give a chance, not, not the whole class, like maybe five people to guess the number of candies inside and we'll start counting them. We will mm -hmm. assign a group of people to count by two assign people to count by fives and the others to count by tens. And is and this that's our start. is this done online? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So great. We, that's, we that's will, great we idea. will make we will make use of what you have shown us, this mm -hmm. uh, groupings that we have. I would okay. like to experiment on this. Let me uh, walk you through all the ideas for all the starter. Thank you, uh, Christina, for that really. You're welcome. Uh, Thank there you isn't welcome. enough time to take a lot of uh, feedback from all of you. Uh, I see Hanan here uh, just to start with a counting song which includes actions and movement to get the learners engaged. And motivated. I love that now, Hanan. Uh, one tip for this activity is to make sure that you can see the students and they can see you because again when we're talking about working online it is a bit difficult. So Hopefully, if you're using a platform that will accommodate that, that would be fantastic. Let me share with you guys uh, what you can do with Abacus Online. Um, I'm not going to read every single thing here. But what I'm going to say to you is that everything you see on the screen is taken out of the planning and the resources on Abacus. So the resource that you see here in this activity um, can, can, can be taken out of the resource section, you know, where I showed you the filter and all that. And you can do, I'll let you read. I'm not going to read anything, but I'll let you read. This is a type of activity that is suggested in the planning. And 
you can start using it online with the students. And one comment I heard in several rooms where you asked them to repeat and count with you, which is great. This is for the starter. And this resource that you see at the bottom is basically here. Uh, I was about to log in. See, there is a link here to log in and show you where the resource is. But this resource is available for you to play it in front of the students and you can ask the students to use the annotation and or you can use the annotation. Annotation is very powerful online uh, because you can ask a student to uh, give them control basically if you want of the screen and ask them to use the annotation and start writing something. Or you can ask all of them to start writing. So for example, if I ask uh, a few of you now to go into annotation and, and give me, um, put a line under, um, or counting in five, put a circle in counting in five using this one. There we go. Perfect. And you know what, what I can do is I can, um, sorry, I can, in my screen, I can, I'll, I can put an option, now you're using the annotation, you're changing my screen. I gave you uh, control, I'm gonna take my control <laughs> back. Sorry, who took my controller back? Here we go. Remote control, avoid control, here we go. Now, what you can do is allow, um, what I did now is anonymous annotation. What I can do, I'm declining everyone's request now because I want to continue, God. I just wanted you to experiment it. Uh, I can have your name appear with the annotation and that way I can track what you're doing, okay? This is another strategy that you can use. Now, let me just remove all this. Clear all drawing, there we go. Do we have any questions? We have another PD to catch up, thank you. No problem, Christina, thanks for joining. Now, if you notice now on my screen, this is another idea for teaching the main lesson. Um, in this idea, you can see the caterpillar here is very tidy, while the dragon is not. So you can show this resource on a PowerPoint, for example, in front of the student. Uh, thank you, Ms. Tasneem. Uh, Aruj, I'm not sure why you're not able. You need to check your microphone because everybody can hear me. So it's not from my side. Um, so this is for the main activity. You can show this on, uh, on a PowerPoint and explain the difference between Katrina and uh, Katrina the caterpillar and the dragon. And then to continue with the main, you can ask the students to use, uh, ask them to count silently here, and then uh, pick on one student and let them explain um, what they were thinking about. Make sure you use a lot of praise. Um, repeat if you can, and use the annotation we talked about uh, to continue here. Um, get you to read it, let me see the questions and you read that. Thank you, Ms. Alia. It's not a question. <laughs> All right, so these are suggested activities and you can start drawing those pebbles here. So you, you, you just uh, show them how to do it. So this is the suggested activity on what to do with them online. And you can use your annotation basically to start drawing those pebbles here and in a different particular shape and particular format and so on. And thank you for whoever is is applying it. I appreciate that. Um, hopefully you can do it with your student. Let's continue. Now, what I'm suggesting here, if you look in front of you, you can see uh, a follow-up task, an email that you send it by email to students. And here is everything suggested in the task. So you send them the instruction, you send them the resources, all by email and you can see it 
uh, they can see it in front of you and you can explain it. Now, if you notice here in the first part when I said resources and resource two attached and resource one attached, here it is. Again, what I, want, what I say all the time that these resources are available on Abacus and you do not need to download them, uh, sorry, develop them. All you have to do is to find them and assign them to students. Now, uh, there is the extend activity. So what you can do is use this resource at the bottom, uh, send it to the students for, uh, sorry, in addition to this activity that you send to everyone, you can send this extend activity with the instruction that are available there. You can explain it to students. You can meet with those students that want to be challenged more explain it to them and share this resource with them. Again, for the support part, uh, you can do the same thing. Their available resources are there for you. Right, and then at the end, I know I'm going faster now guys because I want to show you uh, a quick student view before we finish the session. Um, the plenary, these are ideas from uh, Abacus, you can show online, you can show the students a jar like Christina did earlier and uh, do a plenary where everyone work together online and start shouting out answers either together or you can start picking on one student. The most powerful thing I find is that if you allow the annotation with the names of the student, then you can get them engaged. Students get so excited that they can write on your screen and then you, you'll be able to do a quick uh, continuous assessment activity with the students and find out who's doing well and who's not and needs an intervention. Student view, let's have a look at the student view. This is basically what you're going to see. My home, my stuff, my library, my rewards. Let me show it to you in real view. I'll do a new share. Let me sign out from the teacher account and log in using a student account. Now here is what you see. Can you confirm you see the student account guys? I need only a few of you to confirm. Yeah, perfect, thank you guys. Um, so my home, again, in my home student has the landing page where they have four worlds to, see, to, to choose from. This is only for them to be able to see the screen. Uh, there is nothing there to do other than looking at uh, uh, the home, uh, sorry, at the landing page. Um, they will see their name here and they will see the treasure box. What does this treasure box mean? Every time they open an activity, they collect coins and the coins go in the treasure box. Now this student has 27 coins. Okay, perfect. In my stuff, this is where the student will see the activities allocated to them. And notice I have so many resources. And a student that has only access to Abacus, they will see Abacus. The number nine here explains the resource, uh, the resource, the number of resources that are allocated from the teacher. Notice here, these are the coins. This is the number of coins. This resource was open. Let me open the new one. And please now confirm that you can hear because I shared the, my laptop uh, sound. Uh, when it plays, I want someone just to confirm that they can hear. Thank you, Manar. Uh, notice here the three levels, bronze, uh, silver, and gold. These are still locked because the student didn't finish the bronze. That's, you can hear it, I can see that, yeah? Perfect, so a student, this is what the student will see. So I'm just, going randomly here. I'm not doing the activity basically. 
noticed now, did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? I got it wrong. And so on. This is what the student will, will see. Okay, now can you hear the sound, guys? Now it works. Apologies. So, what you're seeing now, let me see if I can get this right. I'm playing as a student now. Let's see how interactive it is with sound and rewards. Okay. Now let me just close this. Notice now this activity that I played is uh, open now and so on. Now, this is the stuff. When a student finishes the activity, the activity goes to my library. In my library, the spider will welcome them. And here are the activities that are finished. They go on the shelf. So the student can access those activities anytime they want, unless the teacher, uh, unless the teacher, can you hear me now, guys? Yes, okay, because I have two people that cannot hear me and it's from their computer, not from me. Uh, can we create these games are already there? All the games are there, you don't need to create anything. As I mentioned earlier, Manar, there is 12,000 resources, so uh, there's about 2,000 games like this. You don't need to create anything. Um, so in my library, again, just to finish on this point, that when a student is done with an activity, the activity moves from my stuff to my library, and it stays there unless the teacher deallocated it. And then the My Rewards, which is the fun part for the student. All of it is fun, but this is, this is not related to teaching. This is related to spending the coins on something fun for the students. They can go into the sticker book or to the... Uh, pit stop, the skate shack, the game zone, and the tree house. And they can go in and spend their coins there. Like for example, in the tree house, they can go and decorate the tree, spend their money buying it. I'm gonna buy this and close it. And notice that what I bought is already here. Okay, and then uh, do we have any questions here? I mean, if I have a specific thing to teach them and it's not in the library. Uh, sorry, Manar, let me just explain about the library. The library, uh, it, the library is the place where the activities move from my stuff into my library when they are done. But the resources are in the uh, account that I showed you earlier in the teacher account. This is where the teacher will allocate it and it will appear in my stuff. If the student is done, then the activity will move to my library, but you cannot upload anything yourself. Uh, logout, you know what logout means. And grown-ups is the section where parents can log in and read about support in math and in reading. Uh, if they would like to work with their kids, uh, they can read a little bit about what they can do and how uh, the math pedagogy is 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 done um, in teaching math. Let me do a new share. We're nearly at the end now. So just to summarize, you have the my home, my stuff, my library, and the grown up section and my rewards. The last thing, let's open it up to some. Oh, actually, let's do a quick activity. I'm going to post this. Uh, Give me a second. I'm going to post something in the chat now, a link. And I'd like you to log into this link. And in this link, you will see a question. I'd like you to answer this question. It summarizes your learning from today. Chat. Everyone. Please log in to Padlet.com and see the question there. And I'll be joining you there in the Padlet. I'm 
I'm still waiting for some. Oh, here we go. We have anonymous. Yay. Well done, guys. Let me see more of you, please. I'm going to share the screen so you can see it. You can either write your name or stay anonymous. Um, Hadil, I just shared the link. Again, I'll share the link. Click on the link in the chat. Okay, copy and paste, please. Copy and paste, Hadil. Bernard, copy and paste. Right. Oh my God, this wall is amazing, guys. This is amazing. You see, I have an overview of everyone's learning in one single place now. Continue, guys, continue. And you can read each other's uh, learning from today and you can like it if you want. Um, perfect. You see, one single place where everyone writes. And it's a record for me, it's a record for you. Adil, when you copy and paste, you paste it not in the chat here. You paste it, uh, I don't know what you're using. Are you on a tablet or are you on a laptop? Just open Google Chrome and paste it in the URL and you log in immediately to everyone's screen. I'm sharing the screen so you can see it. I'm not going to read every single one here. I'm going to keep it there and I'm going to enjoy the reading, but I can see, uh, Mariam, thank you for that. You're writing it in the chat. <laughs> You're not able to log in. That's fine, Hannah. Uh, let me just type in the questions. Uh, give me a second. So the questions are here. I'll type them in the chat for those who are not able to log into Padlet. Here you go. These are the two questions. Oh, I pasted it to Marisha only. <laughs> Here you go. Fantastic, guys. Look, um, this is amazing. Again, we're not in a particular class when I need to comment on every single learning. Again, I'm showing you an idea on how to uh, how to do it. So, thank you for participating in this. Uh, in this activity. Let me just go back to my screen. New share. Do this. <laughs> it's okay, guys. You don't need to continue typing. <laughs> this is brilliant. I love it. Right, let's 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 stop typing in Padlet, and I'm going to close that and go back to our screen so we can finish. Right. 
So what I'm going to share with you now uh, is the following. What you're seeing in front of you is, um, I don't know why my screen stopped working. This is, this is one technology. The next topics that are coming in uh, for training, you can see um, there's two. There's one tomorrow and one after tomorrow. So if you'd like to join into those sessions, one is about the primary English language and one is about ELT. Uh, they're all posted in the same link where you found it, uh, where, where you registered for uh, this session, so in the same email. Uh, what I'd like you to do is to evaluate my session today. There is a link here that I'm going to post in the, in the chat. And uh, if you don't have time to do it, I prefer if you do it now, but if not, you can do it uh, after the session. Let me just stop sharing. Right, so the link for the survey is the following. There are videos on, um, on, YouTube, on our YouTube channel that will help you use Abacus and Active Learn in general. So if you want uh, to access them, I'll post the link also. Let me go to the chat. Here is the form to evaluate the survey, please. I would like everyone to copy and paste this form and start the evaluation. And I will post another thing for you, which is the YouTube link. It's coming. There you go, copy and paste here. And that's the YouTube link for all our training on YouTube. So Maya, thank you. Thanks everyone for, for your time. Let me do one last share of my screen. If you have any questions, guys, um, I'll be happy to answer them either by email or post them here and I can do a follow-up later. Um, Daphne, you want the link for the resources, no problem. Let me see, I can find the email. I'll send you the link from the email. So, in the communication that was sent to all of you and you registered for the session, there was another link for all these uh, sessions that are happening this week. Um, if you can't find it, there you go. I'm in the link now. So here is the first session to register for. It's the uh, session for English, English for primary. And the second session, here is the link to it also. So ELT session, there you go. Um, Mujida, yes, I will give you now the link for, let me just give me a second. I'll find you the link. I know guys, you're, it's time for you to go, but if you can hang on for a second so I can give you the link uh, to request the free access. Is the primary English webinar today or tomorrow? It's tomorrow, the 29th. Oh, unless, Apologies, it's another, it's today. Sorry, you're right. 
but it's not me, it's not, I'm not delivering it. Okay, here is for free access email. Here you go, I sent it inquiries.middleeast at pearson.com. Okay, I would like to thank every one of you for joining in today. I shared with you the links for the two sessions. I shared with you uh, the link to get the free access. They will inform you of what uh, information they need from you to give you the free access. Uh, I shared with you also the form uh, to evaluate the session. So I appreciate I appreciate your time and your effort. Someone is sharing with us now. <laughs> Who's sharing a screen with us? <laughs> you might, it's not me who shared, someone else. Um, we didn't receive, it's not a link, it's an email. It's an email to, uh, here we go. Hanan, here is the email. You asked for the email. Inquiries.pearson. Inquiries.middleeast at pearson.com. And I'm going to post it again. For free access, email. Okay, I sent it again. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a nice afternoon, guys. I am delivering a session next week on English, so it will be advertised soon. If any of your colleagues or yourselves would like to attend, you're welcome. Once the advertisement is on, you'll be able to register and, and we can meet again, hopefully. Thank you so much and have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye.